one. Welcome back, Harbor Hawks Nation, after an awesome game one victory to start the West Division Finals against the Bourne Braves. Some rainy weather last night. We are back, 7 p.m. kickoff at Doran Park in Bourne to hopefully sweep this series. To my right, this isn't Mike Maynard. We have a special no. co-host today, Jacob Irons, joining myself, Matt Coates. Jacob, welcome. Thank you for being here. I think you lost a foot of height with bringing in me instead of uh, <laughs> Mike Maynard. But hey, I'm ready to go. Beautiful day out. Last time I was on here, we did it through the rain. So I'm happy to get some uh, some nice weather. And you even say kickoff, meaning it's August. It's playoff baseball and also football's right around the corner. Football so right fabulous corner. time to be here. And Matt, thank you so much. Playoff edition of Parking Lot Preview. Playoff edition. I'm so honored. Yeah, no, I'm really excited to have you on, Jacob. You mentioned the rain, too. Last night, we were looking to get that game in crazy conditions early in the day while it cleared up late in the day that rain i think flooded the field and we couldn't do anything about it yeah it was crazy i don't know how i think dorm park fares pretty well for the most part it's seeing pictures it looks like it's pretty cleared out it's ready to go today the bigger question is poor eldridge park the site oh, of the goodness. east division that the out right field corner looked like a pond there's the famous hill on that right mm -hmm. down the right field line it was almost all the way up there it was a lot of water that it took so there was a lot of water in a short amount of time, but with all the sun today, hopefully burning it off and then also just soaking it into the ground, it's going to be a huge and give way to some great playoff baseball across Cape Cod. Yeah, hopefully our friends that are going to go to that game and watch the East Division Finals, we won't get upset at you. Yeah. Hopefully you have some good conditions, the grass isn't too wet. Yeah. Hopefully you brought your blankets and your chairs. Yes. Nothing to worry about. With that being said, let's talk about the West Division Series with the Hyannis Harbor Hawks facing off against the Bourne Braves for the second year in a row. This year, though, things start a little different. Last year, Bourne earned the sweep in that series, but this year, Hyannis comes out to a 1-0 one, one lead in the series. 9-6 victory at home against Bourne. Jacob, what did you see in that game one? That game one was, I think what we talk about is complete baseball. That is a team that, when they needed to show out, they showed up in a big way. And that's something you can't really quantify in statistics. It is just clutch hitting and timely hitting. You look at the man himself, Trey Lipsy, once again, another big spot for him making a postseason story that I don't think anyone could have written no. this year first home run in that game of the summer coming in the postseason in a big spot as well against a team that really characteristically has had your number all year long so that's awesome and ultimately that game one showed why the Harbor Hawks are positioned in a really strong way going down this stretch is when Everybody looked down at the bullpen. He knew he could call on some great people, and one of those great people was Dennis Collarin, who may have had the performance of the year out of the bullpen. 98 miles an hour, he was sitting a very strong performance. He was commanding the zone, and let me just say, he was jazzed, and he was about as ready to go as I've seen a guy, and every strikeout that he had, he was pumping a fist because he was that proud of everyone and knew how much every strikeout was, earning him the save in that one. Yeah, you mentioned Dennis Collarin. He might have gotten overshadowed a little bit and such an offensive explosion, 9-6. to six. We saw three home runs for the Bourne Braves, a fourth from our team with Trey Lipsy, as you mentioned. But Dennis Collarin might could have made a case for team MVP in that victory. Like you said, he made a six-out save, pumping 98-mile-per-hour fastballs into the zone to get five strikeouts. He was absolutely dominant, shutting the door on a potential Bourne comeback, which was huge and really helped us get that one nothing lead. But I think we need to go back to Trey Lipsy. You mentioned yeah. it. That was our writer's player of the game. His second of the postseason already. Phenomenal. Like you said, so far we've seen a lot of heroes from the bottom of our lineup. Eric Snow, another guy who's been hitting phenomenally to start the postseason, and Trey Lipsy. He was only one for three, but that one was pretty special. A two-run homer, opposite field power, going over the wall in left field for two RBIs. He also drew a walk in that game. Just phenomenal game for Trey and phenomenal postseason for this bottom third of the highest lineup. Yeah, when you look at that bottom third of the lineup, it was ultimately responding on every cylinder you could have asked for. It was ultimately getting production, and that's what makes Hyannis so deadly right now and why teams are so concerned to face in these Harbor Hawks is one through nine is contributing. There's not a part in the lineup where a pitcher can take a breath and be like, okay, I'm in the back end of the lineup right now. I can I can work on a couple of things. No, one through nine can find a way to hurt you, and I think that is one of the biggest things right now that in this moment is really strong for their playoff push. But tonight's a big one at Bourne, at Doran Park. They haven't gotten a win there just yet, but when you look at 
everyone contributing. That's the key to victory for one of tonight's games is being able to contribute and have one through nine be a very dangerous bat. Yeah, you mentioned Bourne. They're going to be very hungry. Their game, obviously, not as exciting as our victory. They had a loss. One of the best pitchers in the league was on the mound to start, Tristan Smith. He got tagged for six runs over four and a third innings. Obviously, not what they had envisioned. And even with the three home runs that they hit, as we mentioned, they couldn't come out with a victory. So I'm sure at home, comfortable in Dorn Park, they're going to be ready to come out swinging and try to even the series up. Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of aggression here early for this Bourne team. That is going to be juiced and ready to go. They had an off day yesterday. Both teams are rested. They're going to have a large majority of their arms ready to go for both teams with that day's extra of rest. But once again, you look at Bourne will come out. They have a strong contingent and we played their three Fridays back to back to back in the regular season at the start of June. Mm -hmm. That place is always bumping. I have to imagine with postseason baseball going to Dorham Park, how quick it is over the bridge that this place will just be able to to amplify that. That's why we're asking you Harbor F Hawks fans, if you are on the Cape, get out there. Make sure you're loud. Be proud and make sure your presence is known because that is what Eric Luxus has told me time and time again through talking to him in multiple conversations. The guys feed off that atmosphere. If you can bring that on the road, it's like high school football in Texas, man. It's nothing better. In the stadium, it might be a home field to some, but it's just the place for atmosphere to build. So really, it's all about who brings that atmosphere and for hopefully it's going to be Harbor Hawks fans being able to pack it in. Yeah, Jacob, hopefully we see a lot of this blue and not that navy color that Warren Dawn's on their uniform. So that would be great if we can travel and pack that stadium. With that being said, though, let's look at the uh, pitchers who are going to start the game for each side. Hyannis has a name that you should be excited to hear. Mason Nichols, the junior right-hander out of Ole Miss, is starting so far in the season. 1-1 record with a 3-4-6 ERA and six starts, eight appearances overall. However, I think we should look at his most recent outings, Jacob. Over the last three starts, 13 points uh, and two-thirds innings pitched, only one earned run allowed, seven Ks and three walks over that time. Absolutely phenomenal, Jacob. What have you seen from him? He's a fine wine, getting better with age. Every time he's out here, he is getting better. And through talking to Eric Luxus, it's just consistency. Nichols was selected for Team USA, ultimately breaking up a little bit more of a pattern. He had up here going, coming here for a little bit, going down to Team USA, and now finally he's starting to get on that rhythm. Now in this four start since coming back, it's huge to have that rhythm, have that momentum, to have a feel of how you're playing. And right now, Nichols is showing it. The biggest thing for Nichols is be commanding and be ahead in count. That's what he did so well in a, an almost perfect game into the sixth inning at Dunkin' Donuts Park in Hartford was because he commanded the zone. He was a heading count. That's huge. If he can be able to do that, and that's something I say continuously on the broadcast, is be ahead. It, it sounds like a broken record, but if you're ahead, you know, Han, our cameraman, knows that you're able to open up so many more possibilities as a pitcher when you're a heading count and allow yourself that more of a wiggle room to allow yourself to miss a couple pitches. Yeah, you said it. If you guys had the chance to watch Mason Nichols throw at Dunkin' Donuts Park in Hartford, Connecticut, you know just why we are so excited to see him make this start tonight. He has been phenomenal recently for the Harbor Hawks. Could be arguably our best pitcher in the second half of the season, the way he has performed. So we're hoping for a similar outing tonight against a very hungry offense in the Bourne Braves. Yeah, they're, they are a hungry team. And you look at Evelyn, Bender, Bastein, all of them in there to that one through three, you gotta hold your breath because they are contact guys, they're gonna get down and then you work through their lineup, there's no one that you can, once again, they're another one through nine contributing team, but in that first victory, it was a little top heavy for their production. So if you're able to limit the first three guys in that order against Bourne, and I'm assuming barring any real changes to the lineup, I have to imagine it's gonna be constructed the same because that did them so well against you to it in their first round series be able to sit down one through three consistently, you'll be able to place yourself in a game if you're Nichols. Yeah, I have to agree with you. Evelyn, we saw was four or five in that first game. Like you mentioned, that whole top first lineup is dangerous. With that being said, though, let's go to a name you might not recognize starting on the hill for the Bourne Braves tonight. That would be Nolan Sparks. No appearances so far this summer on the Cape. However, last summer he made two appearances, one regular season outing against Katua, and he had one playoff save, one inning against I believe it was the Falmouth Commodores, actually, he had to save against. It's almost a year ago to date, August 6th last summer. But he's pitched since then. Don't worry. He's been on the mound. He was phenomenal in the NECBL so far this summer for the Vermont Mountaineers. 
He had 31 innings pitched on a 1.16 ERA. So maybe a guy who hasn't been familiar with Cape League bats recently, but he's been pitching. And there's always the conversation of Cape is the premier. There is no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. I worked in the NECBL last year. The talent is just there as well. So to be able to sport as well as he did, he did 0.87 whip in the NECBL this year. That is limiting Unreal. base runners. And that is ridiculous for essentially what many consider the second best summer collegiate baseball league in this country. So to have a 0.87 whip and then to be an NECBL all-star, get the nod in the start, that's huge, especially for the Mountaineers. He's a guy that's going to go attacking zones. And once again, it's familiarity. This is his second time with Bourne. There's no jitters of, oh my God, this is my first time on the Cape. He's been here. He's done this exact thing before. Played for an NECBL team, then came out, and then ultimately came in for Bourne in the postseason and later in the season. So this is huge. Spark's going to feel confident, especially playing at Doran Park, a place that he knows he played there a decent amount. So having that opportunity is huge. I look for Sparks to go five innings for them, and they're gonna. it's going to be the battle of the starters. Yeah. Who can go further? I'm really interested to see it because I think this is going to be a low-scoring game early on. And once again, last time I said that on this show, it did not it did not come true by any means. It was uh, hitters fest. It was pitchers duel for three <laughs> innings, and then two thirds of the game was hitters galore. But however, I really do think it's going to be a really good pitching matchup. If you want to look at pitching, this is your matchup. Yeah, I'm not buying in too much to the fact that this born starter hasn't pitched in Cape Cod this yeah. summer. I think you've talked about it perfectly. Nolan Sparks is a very capable pitcher, and we saw that through his numbers in the NECBL this summer. And pairing that with Mason Nichols, the hottest arm in the dugout for the Hyannis Harbor Hawks, this could be a phenomenal pitching match to start the game. Hopefully, Tyannis who comes out with more barrels early on, but we'll have to see. With that being said, Jacob, I think this is our fans' favorite time. You know what's coming. It's the end of the show. It's time for us to make our picks. You're the guest, so I'll let you go last. Guests, best for last. I'll go yes. first. Player of the game tonight. A guy who we've talked about a lot in our recaps, talked about a lot in the playoffs, deservedly so. Bit of a newcomer, Brandon Ike. So mm. far this summer, he is hitting 500 in the playoffs, three RBIs and two doubles throughout the entire postseason. Been phenomenal. That is why he's earned every start so far this summer. I talked to him after the most recent victory. Very humble guy, just cares about the team and the team success. When I asked him, how are you able to adjust coming to the Cape, such a great league? I'm just playing baseball. Just coming out each day, trying my hardest and trying to help my team. And we've seen that this postseason. He's barreling balls. Been one of our best bat to ball guys in this postseason. And I expect another great performance tonight. Yeah, when you look at Ike, once again, a, a not a rubbish of a team that he came from the Tri-City Chili Peppers out of the Coastal <laughs> Plain League, a team that continuously puts together really strong championship teams. Always, always like seeing their name. And Brandon, you talked about, has been fabulous over these last couple of games. And he snuck under the radar when you look mm -hmm. at Lipsy and Snow that he's contributing in a little bit of a small way. But for me tonight, I'm going to go in a very big way. Mr. Bunty himself, give me Zach Earhart in the top of the lineup. I think this was his coming out party. One of the games that he had put down a bunt to get his first hit of the summer. And then ever since then has been broken free. I like him tonight. I think this is going to be a matchup that's going to play a little bit more to his strength of small ball because of how pitcher heavy it will be. Give me Zach Earhart, player of the game. I'm also banking on a one bunt from him tonight. I don't know if he'll get on, but he will at least try and make an attempt on the bunt. All right, I like that call. <laughs> Zach Earhart has been a popular pick of mine, Jacob Iron, so I cannot go against you for yeah. that pick. Great pick. Hopefully the top of the lineup comes out and maybe they flip the script. We've talked about the guys at the bottom. Guys at the top haven't been too shy themselves. No. They just haven't gotten the big ones. Zach Earhart could get a few big ones tonight. I think he could, and I really do think that this team right now at the right moment is starting to come together. And when you look at Earhart, I think there's nothing. He just has a contagiousness about him, especially how fired up he is. And this is, he's a, now if you want to even call it, he's third generation Harbor Hawk, when you look at his brother here as a as a coach, and mm -hmm. then his father is here, and now him, well, it's probably two generations, but uh, we'll, we'll, right. we'll we'll give it a third because Why Drew not? Drew had two two lives yeah. here. Uh -huh. He had a player life and then and a, a coach, coach's life, but I, I really think he's a guy that wears the curse of age proud, and he knows what it means to be here in Hyannis and to have that opportunity like his dad did is really big. So I'm a big fan of Earhart. Give me Earhart tonight, trying to will his way and will this Harbor Hawks team into the championship game, which is pretty surreal for the first time since 2015. 
Yeah, that would be awesome. Jacob Irons, thank you so much for joining us. Hopefully you guys are on the Cape and are coming to Doran Park to watch. If not, though, tune in to the Hyannis Harbor Hawks YouTube. You can hear this man's voice on the broadcast tonight. And then I think there's nothing else to say, Jacob. Nothing. I go think Hawks. I was go Hawks.